joining us now on Practical 365 is Laurie Potmar from Microsoft. Hi, Laurie. Hello. Welcome Thank to you. our YouTube channel on Practical 365. Thank you for having me. So for those of you that don't know who you are and what you do at Microsoft, do you want to give us a quick overview? Sure. I am the community lead for Microsoft Teams. I sit in the engineering team and my job is to bring our external communities into the process of what we build. And that's why you're here at Commsverse in the UK uh, and it's the first time we've seen you for a few years. Uh, so Paul, you've got a few questions for Lauren. Uh, I'm going to go with one after you, but do you want to go with yours first? I do. I have so many questions, starting with when your Formula One career is going to get unstuck. But let, let's start with kind of an easy one that we get a lot, which is if I have a feature that I want to propose or if I want to know kind of where th a, a particular feature stands, what's, what's the best way to get a feature in the roadmap? You take Bitcoin, I heard, but what, you know, in reality, where should people be looking to give feature suggestions or feedback to the team? Yeah, so we used to have what was called user voice. We right. now have a new tool that is an in-house in tool, and we call it the Microsoft Feedback Portal. And there's a quick link to get there for Microsoft Teams. It's aka.ms slash Teams Feedback. Really creative link uh, to the point. Um, but that's a really important place to go because that's actually where we can action on the feedback. So when people go there, they can choose from existing features and vote, or they can input their own information. What's really important there is to share the justification. You know, not just I want the button red, but right. why does the button need to be red? What are you trying to accomplish? And that really helps lend some context for our team. But that's where we uh, stack rank. We're able to go in and merge items that are alike. And then we take that information on a very regular basis. Um, and we share that with our engineering team to help us prioritize. Okay, so aka.ms slash Teams Feedback is the place to go. Forget you ever heard the term user voice. That's officially banned. <laughs> so one thing we talk about a lot on the podcast is roadmap features and it's not specific to teams so on the microsoft 365 roadmap things might get delayed or sometimes just disappear entirely and i'm thinking of a, an exchange one to be fair uh, <laughs> that just disappeared the other day uh, we'll talk about that in the podcast i'm sure but for teams roadmap items when things get delayed or moved around why does that happen yeah, there's a lot of reasons why that can happen. And I know it's very frustrating and it, you know, it happens to us internally as well. We thought there was something there one day and all of a sudden it's gone. Or it might look one way a certain day and we are progressing thinking that's how it's gonna look and then it changes. And one example of that is the reply to button. You probably all remember, um, you know, we were trying to make that an easier experience so people didn't start new conversations and that changed quite a bit based on feedback, but also based on a lot of the uh, different studies that we were doing to get metrics and figure out how people were using the product. But typically why things change is um, there's a number of reasons. One, there may be dependencies on something else. So we can't, get a feature out the door until something else is done with another feature or another product, even at Microsoft, there's so much integration. So that's sometimes what can happen. Other times quality just isn't there. Or we thought it was gonna behave a certain way, we tested it, we went through the ring process and had customers test it and it just wasn't where we needed to be. And sometimes it needs to be pulled and we need to work out some bugs before we, we continue on. So there's a, a, a number of reasons. There's also prioritization. You know, oh, we, we need to stop working on this because something else has taken priority. Um, so a couple of years ago, the roadmap changed massively almost overnight for reasons that we all know about. But how did that affect not just the roadmap, but a whole sort of de developing and deploying that the whole team's product? Yeah, I mean, that was a crazy time for all of us. And, you know, for us, our priority is making sure that a couple things happen. One, we need to scale. We need to make sure that everybody who needed access to Teams was able to access it. And that was, you know, emergency responders, hospitals, but also children and teachers and school. And, and then those of us trying to run businesses and, and work to keep the world going on. And so we really needed to scale. Um, but we also wanted to make sure that quality was there. And so during that time, we actually had to turn them, some things down and uh, dial back um, and that affected quality because we were trying to scale um, at a very rapid pace. 
and then we were still trying to innovate. We still had um, competitive, competitive, um, you know, features that we wanted to build, and we also wanted to do new, different things that we wanted for teams. So it was a true balancing act, and everything was moving so fast, and really still is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And to be fair, it's been quite a success because people, you know, teams has become a part of almost what everybody does. One of the sessions earlier, somebody said, you know, I was sitting in a bar and I heard the teams ring and it was an advert on the TV. And there was a point during that time where you, everyone just heard all of that yeah. all the time, all the adverts for it on the TV. And now people don't just talk about Zoom, which it seemed to be for a long time, because Thank it was gosh. the thing that you pick up and just use and then it seems to throw away, in many cases, or replace. People, even media, it's like Zoom and Teams, or Teams being the thing that's actually used. So whatever you did, managed to sort of leapfrog and catch up with that, which is an impressive feat. It makes you understand why some of these things fall off the roadmap. <laughs> you yeah. trying to do this. Yeah, and you know, it's it's a balancing act, like I said. It's try, you know, can't be everything to everyone, but we definitely are listening. And our team is extremely customer driven. That's really, really important to us. So user voice and you know, talking with our communities is uh, not user yeah, voice. Right. She didn't mean that. Well, that's the thing. That's Wipe the thing that we've got to get into our head. AKA.ms slash Teams feedback. Our teams feedback, feedback portal. Um, but that really, we really do look at that, and it's yeah. super important that we're using community feedback and customer feedback, partners, and MVPs. We're using yeah. all of those channels to listen to what's really going out in the real world. Yeah, and those are customers. You know, MVPs are usually customers, companies they work for, and anyone putting the user feedback in is going to be a customer sharing what they want. But that's that could be anybody in the business. That could be a user, yeah. IT. But as you say, that justification for why it matters, rather than I just want this shiny thing, because right. is, is the important thing. Think about some evidence to back it up. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we're listening. <laughs> So you've heard that they are listening and Laurie always is. So she's always open to that. So thank you very much, Laurie, for joining us. Thank you. And hopefully we will see you at another conference fairly soon. <laughs>